on everyone um, knows me, so I'm starting again, and I'll start by saying my name is Reverend Brian Richards, and uh, we have a ministry we call the Word of Faith Ministries International, and it's registered in Australia, so it's Word of Faith Ministries International, Australia, and uh, we know, we all understand that there's many Word of Faith Ministries around the world, because that's the name that we use that is more scriptural than anything else. In, in, in Romans uh, uh, 10, uh, verses 8, 9 and 10, is uh, the foundation uh, scriptures for our ministry and really for any ministry because it says in Romans 10, verses 8, 9 and 10, is it, what is it? The word of faith that we preach, see? And it goes on to say in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus rose again from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and by your confession is made unto salvation. The Romans chapter 10, verses 8, 9 and 10. Like I was explaining that the word of faith ministers is... Um, been hit over the years, uh, knocked around a bit because some people have uh, misused the name and abused uh, the Word of God and therefore the Word of word of Faith ministries as such. As at the moment it's, it's a little bit uh, shaky ground when you use that because people think that you are the, the hyper-faith people or the super, uh, super duper prosperous people that you, you're you going to preach heresy. And so, you know, it's been misused a little bit around the world. Nevertheless, it is the most scriptural name that you can have is the word of faith ministers, which arise, derives from Romans chapter 10, 8, 9 and 10. It says, what is it, the word of faith that we preach? And verse 9 and 10, it says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus rose again from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and by your mouth you confession is made unto salvation. So that is the foundation of our ministry, and all ministries as far as I'm concerned. But nevertheless, that's the word, uh, the name that we use. And of course, while we're at home, we do weddings. And therefore, we will use the name Divine Connections. Divine Connection, it is a divine connection. When you meet a person that needs to be a married, and so they recognize you as a married celebrant, and they say that, could you, you know. And so we are having the privilege uh, next Friday of a counseling of people, a couple, that uh, they want counseling, they want instruction, uh, they need correction and direction maybe in their life, and then they'll be married. So we have the privilege, and it's a wonderful, wonderful thing, have the privilege to stand in the place of God and minister to these wonderful people. And so it is a wonderful privilege to be able to do that. And uh, But like we said, that... Uh, if people don't receive the word of God, uh, we have the also the the right to dust off our feet and move to the next town. Uh, and the Bible says, "Go into the world and preach the gospel." And uh, your world, maybe just your hometown, it means for everybody to, you know, be prepared to go out and preach the gospel and go. To to, it says, uh, to Samaria and eventually around the world. And so your world may be just your hometown, but nevertheless, it's talked about not just your relatives, but to reach out to the world. When he says, Arise, shine, in uh, Isaiah 60, says, Arise, shine, because the light has come. Well, the light has come a long time ago. But if the light has come to you, maybe 
one year ago, two years ago, ten years ago, and uh, you have to treat that light, the Word of God, into your heart, the revelation that you receive. You have to treat that light as if it's fresh right now and uh, preach the gospel like Jesus is going to come back tomorrow, today or tomorrow. And a lot of people, if Jesus came back today or tomorrow, would not be ready. A lot of people would not be ready because they see uh, plenty of time. They see Jesus coming back afar off, see that afar off. And um, the Bible says that, you know, the, the, the Lord will come back like a thief in the night and not saying that he's, he's corrupt in any way, that he is a thief in any way. But what does a thief do? He comes when you least expect him. We, we know we've been burgled a couple of times. And they come when you least expect it, when you're not prepared and everything else. And so if you've been prepared, when a feast does come, you're ready for him and he, he can't steal from you. Uh, Jesus, when he comes back, if you are prepared for him, he'll, he'll come back and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord and the kingdom of God or whatever, you know. Uh, but you'll be ready. The Bible says those that are ready, and a beautiful, beautiful scripture I'd like to just quickly turn to it, is in uh, John. Uh, let's see if I can pick it up. It's in John, the letter, the letter of John. Um uh, The letter of John, 1 John chapter 3, I think it is. Yeah, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2 it says, Beloved, now, and what we were saying last week is now, N O W, now is the most up to date word that you can have. You know? Okay? So now, even though it was written years ago, it means now, right now. It says, Beloved, now, this is 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. How about that? Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And, you know, I used to preach the gospel in such a way that we are becoming sons of God, that we be you know, we're all at different levels of faith. And we, you know, some have just been born again today and some have been uh, a Christian for 10 years or whatever. But it, it doesn't say that we are becoming something, even though we are, we haven't arrived yet. But we are now, he says, beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. See that? In other words, we haven't arrived yet at what we're going to be, but the privileges and the rights of the fullness is, is here now. Even though that you are not conformed to the image of Jesus yet, that is the ultimate, that is the goal, that is what we're all believing for is that, you know, in Romans 8, it says that as the groaning for all creation grown us until now for the manifestation of sons of God. That is our ultimate goal. There's only one uh, vision that God has, and that is we can be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, that we be like him. Amen? That we be like him. So he says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, even though it doesn't yet appear for what we shall be. But we know that when... He shall appear, we shall be like him. Isn't that a wonderful scripture? We've got some sirens going past the door, so there's a few people excited about that. 
we're in a country town with sirens going past the door. It means something big has just happened. So we just pray, Lord, that whoever those sirens are for, that they will be, receive Jesus, receive healing and correction in their life. Jesus, name. thank you, Lord. So, this beautiful scripture, and uh, I, I'm going to tell you why it's so important that we say it is a beautiful scripture and we bless ourselves with this scripture is be, the reason why is because in verse 3, and this is 1, Corinthians, 1 John, sorry, 1 John 3 and verse 3 says, Every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. So, in other words, if you meditate on what I'm telling you right now, you are, or the word is, working in you and purifying, making you clean, making you whole in every way, just by meditating in what I'm talking about right here. So let's read it in that light. Let's read it from the beginning. In, this is 1 John, chapter 3. It says, Behold, that means have a look. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Hallelujah. We call the sons of God. But we not only call the sons of God, we are the sons of God. Because he says there, that what manner of love that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not because it knew him not. Verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now, not some time to come. You know, you, you can't be saying, oh, I'm not perfect yet, you know. I have a few failures and, you know. No, no, no. Spiritually, in you, is made perfect. God, what God has done in you, he's done a perfect work in you. You are perfect in the spirit. Okay? And it is, and it, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. So, in other words, people don't see us as the perfection of what has already happened. People don't see us as perfect yet. But there is perfect work being done. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Praise God. When he comes back, we'll know him because we'll be like him. See? And in verse 3, it says, Every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Praise God. That means that just like Jesus is pure and perfect, so shall we be. And as we meditate on that, we purify ourselves. Oh, that's beautiful, beautiful scripture. So, we should meditate on that. That we have, you know, um, we have arrived at a place where God can do and is doing a perfection within our uh, spirit, soul, and body. And it says, spirit, soul, and body will be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is another scripture for that. And, uh, the Apostle Paul prays that uh, we be preserved blameless of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's a beautiful, beautiful scriptures that we'd be just um, 
the Lord just quickened to me that I never was prepared even a, a sermon for that. But as we meditate on these scriptures that the Lord's given me now, we shall be changed. We shall be changed. Okay. It's all by faith. It's all by faith. Even though they're beautiful scriptures that are read out, and I'm saying meditate on it, and you'll be changed, it is all by faith. Because if you cannot believe these scriptures, then you can't receive anything from the Lord. You cannot be changed. You know, you can't be prepared for the coming of the Lord without faith. So, I've been talking about relationship last week, and then I was talking about the hindrances of that relationship. I'm not talking about having a relationship because we already have a relationship. Whether it's a good relationship or not, that depends on the work that we've, uh, the amount of surrender that we've done to him. I'm looking for Hebrews. <laughs> Should be finding that easy enough, isn't it? Uh, Hebrews, Hebrews, where's my Hebrews? Oh, this Bible is getting old now and I can't see the tags, you know. But Hebrews, it's, uh, it comes just before James and just after Titus. Hebrews. And we're going to read from Hebrews chapter 11. And uh, I'm going to get my son to read it in a minute. And so as Joshua comes forward and prepares to read for us some scriptures, I just want us to remember this, that without faith, without faith, None of this is relevant at all. Without faith, we cannot please God. And with, without faith, we can't receive any more from God. And um, I had it explained to me when I was a student of the Word of God many years ago that it's like um, petrol in a motor car, you know? You put petrol in the motor car, it will go. You keep putting petrol in, it will keep going. And uh, the faith that we have within us, it's not just a one-time faith. Uh, and uh, we can run out of faith. And how we run out of faith is the same way we run out of the relationship with God. That uh, If we don't you, you, we all have relatives. We have relatives before we knew each other, uh, mother and father. And then we have other relatives, which are aunts and uncles and that. And if you haven't seen your aunt or your uncle for many years, you're still related. But you, the fellowship and, and the knowing of each other is you're like strange. I know that I have aunts and uncles that are strangers to me, don't really know them. I have 52 cousins in England that I never met. You know, we are related, but we've never fellowship. We don't know, really know each other. And it's exactly the same with, with God. You'll always be a child of God. You'll always be sons of God. You know, there's no male or female in the spirit. We're all sons of God. And that's fair, we, we, you, you know, even the females have to be sons of God. That's pretty fair because we have to be married and we, we call ourselves the bride of Christ. We, if we have to become the bride, it's only fair for you women to be called the sons of God. 
So we're all sons of God in the spirit. And that's our relationship with God. But our fellowship with God is on a day-to-day basis, or should be, on a day-to-day basis, we look into the Word of God to find out what is quickened, what is made alive to us this day, today. And that fellowship, that relationship, that we have with God is being renewed when we do that. And so last week we talked about hindrances to that relationship. And that is the worst hindrance that we can have is that we just don't have time to get in and read what the Word of God says for us today. In other words, we don't have fellowship. We have relationship because we, we're born again with you know, we've, we've had a one-time experience. But that continued fellowship, continued fellowship is a better relationship and you're better knowing of each other. <coughs> Excuse me. And so that's what we, we aim for, to be growing in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So... To put more petrol into your tank, to put more petrol into your vehicle, which is you, the vehicle, is you have fellowship with God. And you put more faith into it. Faith grows. It's not just a one time faith, faith grows. And how you grow in faith is you spend time. Faith-filled words will dominate the laws of sin and death. Okay? Faith-filled words will dominate the laws of sin and death. It says in Hebrews 11 that faith is a substance. So I'm going to get Joshua to read now how that substance is going to become into something. So we're going to receive some substance from the Word of God. Is that right? We're going to have a little box over here. Joshua's going to stand on the box. He won't need that box for much longer because he's a growing boy. And uh, So you stand up there, introduce yourself and read to us the Word of God. <clears throat> Um, my name is Joshua Richards. I'm the son of Reverend Brian, as you should already know. Um, I'm nine years old. I was born in 2006, July the 28th. And today I'm going to read um, Hebrews chapter 11, um, 1 to 16. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it to the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gifts and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him, or before his translation, he had this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became here of the righteousness which is by faith. 
By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obey, and he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of the promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in the tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, that he is with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to convince seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful and who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and as good and as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the sea saw innumerable. They all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and convinced, confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they saw, for they say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had an opportunity to return. But now they desire a better country. That is a heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that, that is very, very, very hard reading. Um, and... Uh, we, we've been giving Joshua some very hard reading the last couple of weeks, uh, but if he understands what he's reading, then he'll have greater faith. There's a couple of words there we'd like to uh, reiterate to make it more clear. In, uh, by faith, Enoch was translated uh, that he should not see death. And... Uh, uh, because God had translated him before the translation, he, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So, if we please God, uh, we'll have the testimony from other people that we please God. And whether we live or whether we die before Jesus comes back, if we have a testimony that we we please God, people will know that we are with Him. If we not here, it's a wonderful testimony to be stand up at a, a somebody's funeral and say that I knew this man as a man of God. That's a wonderful, wonderful testimony. It's fantastic, really, it just tickles me, you know. I just think, well, wow, that's that's a wonderful thing. Whether we're here or not, when Jesus comes back, you know, if we, we've gone before Jesus comes, somebody's going to come and speak at your funeral and gonna, they say, well, this man please God, you know. So we know, they're going to say, we know, wherever he is, he's with God. <laughs> See? And that's a wonderful testimony. And, and so these people that are mentioned here in Hebrews, we know, or the writer is saying that we know that they are with the Lord, that they please God. And by faith, they did great exploits. They did great things. In Noah, build an ark. You know what I mean? <laughs> and... Uh, I mean, we have some 
ridiculous things that are going on in the world right now from non-Christians, you can expect ridiculous things to happen. But also with Christians that are doing ridiculous things because they are not meditating in the Word of God. You know? By faith, Noah built the ark. But there's no reason for anybody else to build an ark like Noah because the Word of God says in Revelations that I'll put a rainbow in the sky and that'll be a promise to you that I'll not flood the earth again. And what is an ark for then? An ark is built to float on water. God is not going to do that again. However, there will be a flood, but it'll be a flood of the Spirit of God. There will be revivals around the world like no man has ever seen before. And it's going to be so simple, so easy for people to come to know Jesus in a very special way that they've never seen before. Why? Because we have more revelation now of the Word of God, more understanding of the Word of God than any man has ever had before us. And we are arriving at a place where we decide whether we're going to go on to be like Jesus or we're going to stay still. We have this promise, which I've just read to you, that if we meditate on this word, we're going to know him because we're going to be like him. When he comes back, we shall know him, who he is. You know? I mean, <laughs> we have these ridiculous testimonies of people saying, oh, I think he's Jesus. You know? I think, well, it just shows you that they are not in the word. They are not fellowshipping with God through his word. Because the Bible says that many will come as false Christ. Many will come and say that Jesus, we've got a guy up in, this is Australia, we're speaking from Australia, we've got a man up in Brisbane, the north of Australia, saying that he's Jesus. Many people following him. But are they following what the Word of God says? The Word of God says that there are many come in my name and people will follow, but that's not the truth, you know. So there are things happening around the world today that's uh, not necessarily ashamed of because the Bible says it will happen, but we have to be wise. We have to be in the Word knowing full well that uh, there are those that have paid the price for us today, that have paved the way. And uh, it'd be nice to have your name in the book of Hebrews, not this Hebrews, but the one that is being written by yourself, because the Bible is still being written. The Bible is still being written every day by you. It says that the, the tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Okay? And what you write down, the notes that you write down, this sermon is anointed because you're anointed. And so God is inspiring people to write books like this. I believe this is an inspired writing. This is just scraping across a point there. <laughs> uh, this is inspired by God, and it's called We Live in Prophecy Every Day. And it says in the on the cover here, uh, Proverbs 27, 17, Iron sharpens iron, so is the man sharpens his countenance with his friends. So God will use your friends to make you sharp, you know. And uh, they'll ask you things. You know, you can uh, meditate in the Word of God. You say, you know, what I read today. And get excited and with your friends. And God will use your friends to make you sharp. You know, iron sharpens iron. So uh, the countenance of his friends. 
See, so when you're in meditating the Word of God and you you compare notes with your friends and say, you know, uh, I notice you writing as uh, Reverend Brian was sharing the Word of God. I notice you've got a lot of notes there. And uh, what on earth did you write? I'll show you what I wrote. What do you, you know? And as you compare notes, you realize that God is speaking to you very, very clearly, just as clearly as the Bible is. And so we have books like this from men of God around the world. They write books and they are very inspirational. They're not perfect, but they are inspired by the Spirit of God. God is still writing the Bible and you are the, the Bible. You are the manifestation of Jesus, each and every one of us. We, we're not Jesus. But collectively, we are Jesus. You know, you won't be Jesus. Jesus doesn't have to come back and manifest like a man, like it did before. Doesn't have to do all that. He's done it all. And as we follow the Word of God, it says that all creation grows for the manifestation of sons of God. We are the sons of God, and so we've been conformed into His image. And it's a wonderful, wonderful experience to to, to do that. Uh, let me go back to Hebrews 11. Uh, Hebrews 11. I'm going to read a little bit here. Where it says, "Faith is the substance." Okay. So I've written in, in, in a note to myself here, saying that faith is the substance, hope is the blueprint, and love is the motive behind everything we do. So the Bible tells us to have faith, hope and love. Faith, hope and love. The greatest, of course, is love. But faith, hope and love is what we're told to have and we will see Jesus. We will see the Word of God work for us. And I said last week that the hindrances to relationship. Well, now I'm talking about the hindrances to our faith will be not fellowshipping in the Word. Because faith comes from hearing and hearing the Word of God. And without that kind of hearing, without that kind of faith, we can't please God. Faith puts substance to hope and hope with love will bring a manifestation of our prayers. God bless you. I hope that has blessed you today. That um, when we're in agreement with the Word of God and we're in love with each other, the motive for what we pray for is correct. And it will come to pass just as, just as quick as that. And just like these people that have gone before us, that are written in Hebrews, we can speak and say things that will come to pass just as they did. So we are to speak good about those things that hinder us. Just speak good about them. Don't speak the bad. Just speak good over them knowing full well that your words are going to come to pass. Your words will come to pass. So I, I, I might just uh, I might just leave it up there and uh, I'll give you one scripture to go home with and that is Hebrews 12, 14 says Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fall of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby may be defiled. So that's it in a nutshell, what I've been talking about. The hindrances 
to our love walk, the hindrances to our faith, is because we get out of fellowship with the Word of God and our relationship is not so strong because of it. We don't have the right kind of fellowship through the Word. Okay? Jesus and the Word are one. And as we meditate in the Word of God, we're meditating in the spirit of that Word, which is Christ. Amen? So I'm going to pray for those people that want prayer, but before we do that, I'll let my wife come and give us glad tidings, sing us a song, and then I'll come back in a few minutes. What time do we have here? Uh, while my husband Brian preaching the word of God, I've learned something that uh, make up my mind about uh, what he said, that uh, without faith, we cannot please God and we cannot receive anything from God. Uh, you are right, you know, uh, I, I give you a short testimony in my life that uh, when we went back to Philippines in December 2015, and where we visited to the prisoners and these prisoners are sleeping in a complete floor so we we decided to bless them sleeping mats but the available sleeping mats that we give away is at 46 only so we give away with them and and uh that was uh, wonderful that we give away for 46 pieces. But Brian asked them how many of them, there's prisoners. And included with the women, there are all uh, 400 prisoners. And I was shocked when Brian said, okay, we order 400 to give away these prisoners. and. I told to myself, oh no, why? Uh, it's not good to to promise with them. And and uh, I uh, I'm panicking, you know. What are we gonna do? We have no money. We have money, but it's not enough. And and Brian has a great faith in God. And when we come back from Philippines. We got here, we got a phone call from a friend and he said uh, how, how much we're going to spend for that uh, another 400 sleeping months. And he blessed us to pay off that 400. And that was uh, very, uh, I've been witness how God is great, you know, if you have faith on him, you can receive anything from him. That, that was true, that if you have faith, hope, and love, you can receive anything from God. You can achieve your dreams. Whatever you desire in your heart, you can achieve with this by faith in God. I remember my one of the, my memory verses is, is that, um, this, uh, Whatever you desire in your heart to God, you can receive it. So this is it. You have to receive by faith and Mark you can 11, receive. Uh, Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, 23. Have faith. Have faith on God. Speak to the mountain and you can receive. The mountain is sickness the mountain is a financially problem the mountains is whatever you desire you can receive it if you have faith on god that was talking about that if you have uh if you place to god if you have faith on god you can receive anything from god that's what uh i've learned a little bit learning today i'm i cannot uh learn the whole thing because um uh, you have you have to understand English, but 
this is, uh, I truly believe that if you have faith in God, you can receive anything. Okay. Uh, I have a little bit of encouraging words here. It's very good encouraging about faith. And after that, I will sing a song. When you've done everything you know how to do, just keep on standing firm. You may be in a situation today where you have done your best. You prayed, you believe. You place your faith firmly on the truth of God's word. But it doesn't look like anything is happening. Now you are tempted to say, what's the use? It's never going to change. Don't give up. Keep standing. Keep praying. Keep believing. Keep hoping in faith. The Bible says, for payday is coming. Friend, God will reward you if you keep standing up on the inside. You may be in the hospital lying, but if you cannot stand up physically, nothing can keep you from standing up on the inside. That sickness may have you done physically. But you don't have to be down spiritually or emotionally. You can keep or getting up in your heart, mind, and will. So I would like to sing a song, Mighty to Save.
pray right now. Heavenly Father, I pray for those people, Lord, and for their needs. I pray for healing and deliverance. I pray for salvation and deliverance. You say this with me. Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus rose again from the dead. I believe Jesus rose again from the dead. I receive him as my Lord and Saviour. I receive him from the Lord and Saviour. And my healer and deliverer. And my healer and my deliverer. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me my sin. And come into my heart. And come into my heart. And make me born again. And be born again of your spirit. Born again of your spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I just pray for all those people that receive the healing now. By the stripes of Jesus be healed. I pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to manifest in people's lives as they receive the anointing of God in Jesus' name. Amen.